Okay friends, one of the first things we have to do is safely raise and support the vehicle. Once you have your wheels off the ground in the rear, we're going to go ahead and remove all six of these lug nuts. Remove your wheel. One of the next things that we need to do is take a nice small pry bar like this. We're going to come in between the caliper and the pad and we're just going to apply a little bit of leverage. What we want to do is just push in that caliper piston just a teeny bit to take the pressure off of the brakes. The next thing we need to do is remove our two 18 millimeter mounting bolts for our caliper. Just take a wrench. You can use a socket with a ratchet if you'd like. There's one bolt. I'm just going to start that in just a couple threads to hold the caliper for me while I remove the second. There it is. Let's get that other one out of there. Next we're going to take the caliper and we'll just set it up here where it's going to be nice and safe. Just make sure you put it somewhere that it's not going to potentially fall down and hopefully not hurt you in any way. Now it's going to be time to remove your rotor. You might need to give it a couple light bonks. The next thing we're going to do is use our 8 millimeter, and we're going to remove this small bolt right here. Just be careful because very often it's frozen in there and it might break off. Nice long ratchet did the trick. That little bolt out of there. Grab this out of here. Set those aside. I'm just going to grab onto this. You'll notice it can move around now. now. If you were to look under here, you're going to see the adjuster. If you just take that shoe, move it kind of closer to the axle, and then give it a loving bonk down, it should come free from the adjuster. Go ahead and grab that shoe. At this point, you can try to weasel it off the axle. There we are. The next thing we're going to have to do is take out this area right here. This is going to be the adjuster and it should separate. We'll just spray it down with some penetrant. That looks good. Grab my little pry bar here. We need to separate the cogged area from the base area. Okay, starting to come up. Get this side out of there too. Right inside this area is where the adjustment's supposed to be for the emergency brake shoe. If you take it apart and you happen to notice that this part right here is frozen, the part that has a little cog, this part right here should spin in there. If it does not, you need to completely separate these, clean them up, re-lubricate them, and then of course put them back together. This piece right here has like a little bobble. Believe it or not, that's not one piece. It actually does come apart, so you want to be careful not to lose this. It's a great idea to clean all this up as well. That's just about good right there. This flows smoothly. It's looking great. You want to make sure that this area right here is nice and clean, free of debris or anything that might obstruct it from being able to spin because that's going to go inside this hole right here. How can I tell that this goes inside of this hole and not in the bottom hole? Because of this little clip right here. That clip is going to line up with the notches on this and it's going to prevent it from spinning on its own. We're not going to put that in yet though. What we're going to do, grab some more of that caliper grease and we're going to put it right inside the hole on the other piece. All right, this is going to be the other end. Just try to fill it right in there if you want. Get some more. More the merrier. Put it right in. Now I'm going to grab my nice clean pen. I inspected it. It's in good condition. I'll just put it right in there. Now we need to put a nice coating of that grease all along the areas where it's going to rub up along the unit right there. Now that those are nice and coated, let's continue on with the grease a little bit more and we're going to go directly to where the adjuster is going to be. You can go ahead and put in as much grease as you want. If you put in too much, it's not really that big of a deal, but what you will notice is it will kind of come out. And if that was to happen, you would just kind of clean it up so you don't get any mess on your emergency brake shoe. Now we're going to take our pieces, should slide right in there, make sure it spins like it should. Do the same to the other side. 
you're going to need a little bit more of that caliper grease or whatever type of grease you're using and you're going to put it on the contact points of this bracket where the emergency uh, brake shoe is going to ride. The reason for that is of course for vibration dampening and noise reduction. So we'll come right down here because we know it's going to ride right along the outside there. Right here, this is a spot right there. If you were to come up here, you're going to have this whole area. It hits up against there. And then if you come along the other side, you can clearly see exactly where the emergency brake shoe was riding before. Here we go. Now it's time to get the emergency brake shoe back up on here. To do this, you're going to have to do a little bit of contortioning and just a little bit of wiggling. And I'm sure over a period of time, you should be able to figure out how to get it right over there. There we are. Nice light bonk, no big deal. We'll go ahead and line these tabs up with where it's supposed to sit on the adjuster there. Should slide over. If it doesn't, you can just kind of go past, line up the adjuster um, ends so they're straight up and down, so they'll line up with the way that the shoe needs to go on. Once you've gone past, like I said right here, you should be able to just kind of stretch it and draw it straight up on there. That looks great. Now it's going to be time to get the mounting bracket on there. It's a kind of funny looking thing, but if you were to look at it, you would see that it has an indented area right here. That's going to ride right on this bracket right there. You want it to be kind of facing in this general direction so that the black part is going to be riding up against the inner portion or the inner ridge of this shoe. Put it up on there, line up your screw hole, and then put in your screw. All right, so that's pretty much bottomed out right there. At that point, you definitely don't want to go too much further because it is just a very small bolt. But something that I would like to mention is you also don't want to go tight enough. With that said, once it's bottomed out, just give it a teeny bit more. Make sure it doesn't feel as though it's super loose to you. Give this a nice little wiggle. Make sure you don't see any movement between this and the bracket itself. I think that that looks great. The next thing that we need to do is clean up the mating surface where the rotor is going to match up against the axle. If it's all bumped up like this or rough in any way, just go ahead and sand it down with something. Now that the majority of the area is nice and clean and sanded down, we need to continue on by getting in between the lug studs and the rest of the hub area here, right in there. If you notice there's large buildup, you can use something like this, maybe a scraper or even a flathead screwdriver. Just kind of get the majority of it up, and then you can take a nice brush and just work at the rest. Now we're going to spray down the mating areas with some copper never sees. Before you go ahead and put your rotor back on there, look at the back side. This is the area that's going to meet up against the axle. You need to make sure that's nice and clean as well. Now that we've cleaned up the back side of the rotor, we're just going to place it over the axle like this. Push it all the way in, and it should go over the emergency brake shoes. If it doesn't go over the emergency brake shoes, de-adjust your adjuster. If it does go over, but you feel as though there's no drag at all, you're probably going to want to adjust it up a little bit. What you're actually going to want to do right now is get it so it's semi-close. So you can hear the shoes just barely dragging in there. Okay, that's the sound of the shoes hitting up against the inside drum portion of this rotor. If it's too tight and you try to turn it and it just doesn't want to turn, then you know that it's over adjusted. If your brakes are over adjusted, they're going to overheat and you're going to have major braking issues. Now it's going to be time to get the caliper back on the vehicle. Before you go ahead and do that, you need to make sure that you clean all the existing thread locker off of these bolts. And I always like to replace it with some new thread locker of my own. Caliper around here. Make sure that your pads are situated inside the brackets as they need to be. They might keep wanting to fall out if they're like mine. Go ahead and grab those caliper mounting bolts. Start them both in. Now we'll snug them up and we'll torque them to 148 foot pounds. Get our torque wrench. The next thing I always like to do at this point is to make sure I pump up the brake. Now it's going to be time to get the wheel up on here. Let's start on those lug nuts. And then we'll bottom them out and we'll torque them to 140 foot-pounds. Let's torque them.
double check them if you want and if you have a center cover put that on as well let's make sure we double check that brake fluid give it a wiggle it looks as though this is low there's the maximum line open this up we're going to add some dot three brake fluid bring it right up to that maximum line make sure you close it back up down the road you go.